If you ever find yourself on one of these full body scanners, it either means you're dead or you've been badly injured, probably in a car crash. It's a full body scanner that can measure my entire body within 13 seconds and can quickly tell a medical practitioner or a mortuary technician either what has happened to me and whether I will survive or not, or whether or not I'm well and truly out of here. This is tonight. I'm Bruce Whitfield and struggling to sit up, but to bring you the, the brilliance, I think, of the Lodox machine. It was made world famous in Grey's Anatomy, featured at the hospital, the fictitious hospital that is in Grey's Anatomy, and they gave it something like 27 mentions in a very short period of time. Since then, Lodox, a South African innovation over the last 12 years, has hit the world stage. There's something like 50 machines around the world in circulation, and recently, Ibrahim Patel announced that we would also get 12 of these in the Gauteng health system. Peter de Beer is the chief executive officer of Lodox. So, Peter, this has got actually its origins in your namesake, the De Beers Mining Company. It was designed in its original form for industrial purposes. Yes, Bruce. Sadly, I was not one of the De Beers. I don't think De Beers ever made money, but we've got the engineers that started this company, and that's very good for us. And we had their brilliance to bring us this, what we call our baby. Okay, this is your baby. It's a Lodox machine made famous by Grey's Anatomy. Until they put it on a soap opera, nobody in South Africa had ever heard of you. They must have opened up the world of opportunity for a South African innovation worldwide. It definitely did. It definitely did. And it was very good for us. The bad thing is, it's a soap opera, like you said. So the medical doctors say you make yourself famous by media, but luckily we have all the clinical proven papers and everything for this, for this product. But how did you get onto Grey's Anatomy? Because Grey's Anatomy, for all of its soap opera nature, does have a proud history of medical accuracy in the depictions that they do. They did research into emergency services in the United States, and they're in Hollywood, California, and we've got a machine in LA County Hospital um, close by there and the surgeons they said if you do have a proper emergency setup you must have one of these machines there so they asked us do we have a machine at the time we had a machine en route to a customer in America and we asked the customer can we reroute the machine and it worked out wonderful for us. Now the IDC is your biggest shareholder it's got 95 percent of the equity in this business uh, you're 12 years old you couldn't have got to this point with a South African innovation were you a private sector business it's no doubt been an expensive process. It's very expensive there were no doubt that we would be here without the IDC um, and their help they really really financially step in when this company was in dire dis distress to not to make it. And um, without their funding and their help with government and people and resources, we couldn't make it. So we now 12 years old, like you said, and the past five years we've just grown and in the past year especially we've made our mark this is, five, this is $500,000 technology. This stuff doesn't come cheap. You've recently announced, uh, Ibrahim Patel, uh, your minister has recently announced that this is going to be rolled out in Gauteng Public Hospitals. We've had it in the South African health system yes. for uh, the last couple of years. The Hrutiskir Hospital had one of, one of the first in the world. Yes, Hrutiskir, we've got that machine here in the factory. It was 12 years old. We just replaced it with one of these machines, a new one. So. But the, it was a new methodology, it's a new, new way of treating emergency patients. Normally patients arrive at the hospital, the doctors do what they need to do, they call the primary survey, to resuscitate that patient. And only when the patient is stable, they send them for x-rays, so they get x-rays to them to get imaging. With this machine, the machine is in x-rays, uh, in emergency, not in x-rays, the patient gets scanned on arrival, like you lied here, it takes 13 seconds for that scan, that was real time, the movement. Within a minute thereafter, an image is on the console, full body, x-ray image. You can zoom into any part of the body. They make their diagnosis much quicker and the information they gain from that help them to plan the treatment much better in the past. So now, old-fashioned radiologists who wait in the radiology department are quite grumpy with you. They either see this as a threat to their livelihoods or their argument is, the quality of this isn't good enough to make a decent diagnosis. That actually this is a machine that potentially risks lives because you don't yes. get the detailed imaging that you get two hours later in the radiology department. Yes, they got it slightly wrong. Our machine get compared to CT scanners, which is a 3D image, which got much more clinical detail than you can get from an X-ray. But that takes 20 minutes plus to get a patient ready for that scan and get the information. The radi radiologist must look at the picture and say what's wrong. An x-ray image is less detailed, but our images are of the best digital images out there. 
and we've got many clinical papers proven the quality of our images. You can see soft tissue as well as bone, and we can play with the clarity of the image. For emergency surgeons to make a diagnosis, it's perfect. So it's a screening tool at the beginning of the treatment. In the old days, they used to talk about the golden hour. If you were in a car crash and you could get to an emergency room within an hour, it dramatically raised your chances of survival. Today, this should sort of shorten that hour quite considerably. It does, it does. And that's why one of our biggest ambassadors, Professor Kenneth Boffard, used to be Joburg General Hospital, which is now Charlotte McSecki, now at Mill Park Hospital, he claims that our machine take down resuscitation time with at least 15 to 20 minutes. So in saving a life, so that means it would take 20 minutes lo longer to make a diagnosis or to make a decision regarding what, how to treat a patient. In the South and African, we see that yeah. as significant. In the South African private sector, however, this would never have got off the ground. You've got the deep pockets of the IDC on your yes. side. They too will want a return on their investment, however. And while they have deep pockets, they don't have endless patience. Um, by yes. the time uh, you, you, you deliver the 12 new machines into the Gauteng Health System, that will take you globally to about 50 machines in yes. mortuaries and in private and public hospitals around the globe. Yes. Are you anywhere near a point where you can start becoming profitable? We, we will definitely get to that point. We'll be close to 60 machines. But the whole model works that it's not only the selling of the machines, the number of machines. It's also issues of maintenance and things and all of that that helps the profitability. So over the next 10 years, if we keep on the trend and we put the machines where we put them to, we will definitely be able to be profitable and pay back the loans. Um, at the moment, we are turning into a profitable position and we're doing quite well as a company, but we've got all those loans that we need to pay back. But what is more important, and that's I think where the IDC comes in, is they didn't give this money to the company to make money. It is to bring this technology to people that do not have it and to better the treatment in public hospitals. We are changing at least 12,000 people's lives a year currently in South Africa with Gauteng, extra 12 hospitals, that's going to be more than double, maybe three times. Now, I went through the scanning process, a 13 second scanning process. I think ethically you're not allowed to actually scan me unless I throw myself out of a window and crack a rib and ask for medical help. Um, but you did scan, uh, you have got a scan of a picture uh, of a body, roughly looks like me, not nearly as well built of course. Um, yes. But this is the sort of quality of image that you're able to produce. And when you look at this image, does it tell you anything in particular about my fictitious health? The image, the images are beautiful and you <laughs> Well will, thank you. That's and and, and, and so. it's all to do because of you. Of course. Excellent physique so you look very very well on it. And um, we, we can show some images. We have radiologists that love our images. They think it's some of the best images they've seen. So clinically proven not just because we think it's beautiful, our images are really, really good. You can see everything you can see with any other x-ray, but it's slightly better because it's digitally enhanced by processing software so that you can play with the grayscales in the image by either seeing soft tissue or bones. Mm. That's, that's not that easy sometimes with other analog equipment, other digital x-rays, you can do similar things to it and our machine is as good as any other digital x-ray. That's the life-saving part of it. It has a slightly more morbid application as well and you have these machines sitting in mortuaries in the United States. I don't know if they're in mortuaries in South Africa but we yes. know the huge backlogs that we see in state mortuaries in South Africa. This could have a, a, a very much a, a crime intelligence application in South Africa as well. Yes, in the States they've got the CSI setup. Like we know CSI, Grey's Anatomy, that's a setup there. And my first machine was in Baltimore University Hospital in the States, which really looks like CSI. And after that it just took off. It's a gold standard in the US. I think we're standing on 10 forensic machines and it's just taking off um, being there. In South Africa we had two machines in the Western Cape for quite a while, for five years. And now with Gauteng, we've included in Gauteng as well three mortuaries. We just did two installations, Pretoria Forensics, Johannesburg Forensics. Um, and Anybody South Africans understand the benefit now and suddenly the, 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 the judicial aspects of, 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 of forensics will be better because of this machine 
plus all the other advantages. At the risk of getting a little bit, it's, it's nine o'clock at night, so people have had their dinner, nobody's going to <laughs> yeah. be sick. But does this avoid the necessity for pathologists to cut people open and to weigh the lungs and the heart and the spleen and everything else? Is the evidence that is going to be gathered by this machine on the morgue table going to be sufficient to be used in court, and particularly in the South African court system? It's been shown in the U.S. that sometimes it can be enough. The, the, the primary thing about forensics is to, to, to see what was the cause of death. And if were there any other things, if it's an unnatural death. So our machine showed that they can assist with that, plus other things. If you get a victim with 12 bullets in him, sometimes I found 14 because they were old bullets in him. Yeah. We've got cases like that. And you need to find where they are in the body, exactly where they're situated. You need to get them out. That's normally 12, 20 x-rays later if they have x-ray equipment. In South Africa, many mortuaries don't. So it takes them, we've got a case study that took the, the, the surgeon 20 hours to do the examination. With our machines, you did the same thing in half an hour. Mm, okay, so there, there's an efficiency aspect to it as yes. well. Are the orders rolling in? Because we would like to see the South African innovation becoming global, a global standard. Are you, are you getting the orders coming in from all four corners? It's definitely, of the it's definitely increased since Grey's Anatomy. The big one was the Gauteng one. Yeah. We believe that Gauteng will be rolled out into the Western Cape, KwaZulu Natal, and then the rest of South Africa, and that will happen in the next two to three years. How long does it take you to deliver one of these machines? It, we can do maximum two of them at a month at the moment. That is our capacity. What does it take you to scale up so to getting five or six a month? Because if the orders do come through, you're going to need to ramp up. Yeah, we just had a board meeting yesterday, very interestingly, and the board were grilling us about that. And we are ready to scale up up to 50 machines a year within a very short period of time. Um, should it be necessary. So we won't do it this year, I think. We just need to deliver these machines, show Gauteng what we can do, and then it's there. And then next year, probably upscale and satisfy because South Africa now take normally our bulk order now, and the rest of the world is also interested. So we've got, we will do that. Peter de Beer, he's the Chief Executive Officer of Lodox. It is this machine, and I hope you never have to find yourselves on one of these things. They're terribly comfortable. But it's not a good news story if you are on one of these, but certainly it is a machine, a South African innovation, that in dire straits may end up saving your life one day. South African innovation on the global stage made famous by a soap opera. That's been tonight with Bruce Whitfield. Thank you so much for watching. There'll be more tonight, tomorrow. Good night.